Hi everyone, it's Phil again from Ashland Leather and welcome back to week three of the Ashland 10 year celebration. We're gonna be looking at a bunch of special private stock wallets that are gonna help celebrate this third week of our 10 year celebration. I'm here with my business partner, Dan Cordova. Here again, week well, three. Welcome back. Why don't we take a look at your wallet that you've been wearing? That's natural shell tumbled. I've been wearing that probably on and off for about a year. It's interesting in the back. I don't, I don't know how many people are familiar with a box board texture, but it's almost like box boarded on the back. Mm -hmm. And how are you enjoying the uh, Frank the Enforcer? I've never actually worn or put one through the ringer. I really like it. Uh, I don't carry a lot of cards or cash, so it's perfect style for me. I also carry the Capone mostly, but I switched over to this. And I've been wearing a Fat Herbie, but this is the tall version of the Fat Herbie that has the exterior bill slot that's extended all the way to the top. I had never worn one of these before, so I was really excited to try it and see how different this tall bill slot was. Uh -huh. It's not that big of a difference. It's a little bit easier with the, the regular Fat Herbie with that thumb notch to get cash in and out of, but there's something, the thing I like most about it is this clean interior on the center. Yeah, it looks very flush. Yeah, so when you have the tall versions of the wallets, you can have the grain side of the leather on all of the exterior of a wallet and all of the interior. Take a look at how that M's is worn in. So this is the natural M's Chrome XL, which is a variation on the famous Chrome XL leather. It's more mm -hmm. grainy, more natural in appearance, Very and a nice. little bit more dense because it's pit tanned and it's hot stuff with a different blend of waxes. I like the thickness here too. Well, yeah, that's Great. the other thing is these were made on those uh, thin horse hides. Which actually, most of the stuff we started making, we wanted it to be as thin as possible. You can get too thin though, because I, I do see that request when I'm cutting stuff, make as thin as possible, but as thin as possible can also be raggy. And I just don't like how it feels. Like I can make something as thin as possible, but I make it as thin as possible that I'm still gonna like that end result. So the Tony, for example, you have one, two, three, four, five. You have six layers here. Let's show that. So two card slots on the left, two on the right. There's like, we call this the middle piece and then there's the bill slot in the back. So if I'm trying to make a thin Tony, I still want this back piece here. I want it to have substance because I want it to feel good in your hand. But then I try to go really thin with all the other pieces. I think of it in my mind when I'm cutting is like a balance. Like if they're all thick, it's too thick. If yeah. it's all thin, it's like too wimpy. Right, right. And you don't want your wallet to feel wimpy, which is, this back piece is very important because it can get too thin where it just feels kind of raggy. Why don't we get into some of the anniversary wallets? This is a 100% all reverse that has amazing Dexter dice splatter. So this is one of the, fat, this is, I think this is the first Fat Herbie that we've shown on here. Last week we had a, um, a Bugs. But here you can really appreciate it on a wallet this size how amazing this is. When I saw these shells, I knew it was going to make amazing wallets. But when I picked these up from uh, from Amanda, I was blown away. You know at how amazing this turned out in a finished product. And I picked. I also picked one wallet this week. It's been hard for us to to stick to one. But I picked this one here. This is a Bugs Moran. That is kind of like our Tony the Ant, but it does not have a bill slot on the outside. It's a little bit of a punchier form factor. I call it. It's a little smaller. But what I really like about this one is the leather, which is kind of like everything we do. It's sort of all about the leather for me. But this is a leather called English Tan Dublin, although this is tanned on a bison hide. So you get this really incredible um, texture on the outside and on the inside. It's got these highs and lows in color that you don't see as as frequently or as intense that you, as you see on the steer hides. And I just think it's really beautiful. What do you say we get into some of the other wallets? Here's another closer look at Dan's pick of the week here. Tell us about this guy again. Well, that's the uh, Fat Herbie Color 8 Reverse with the amazing um, Dexter dye splatter. I almost said blood splatter. So how how does this differ, the Dexter pattern, from a standard Reverse Color 8 shell? Uh, it really doesn't. It's just the way the, the dye kind of dripped through gave it a really interesting look but there's nothing different about the actual leather itself it's just the random this is sort um, of more linear this one's really cool the other thing that we've done specifically for the dexter is hand glazing them mm -hmm. and you can kind of see the shine that it has here even though it's the reverse shell which is not the shiny side of the shell it does have a really significant luster let me show you i want to give you a closer look at this bison english tan dublin 
This is something we should probably figure out if we can do it more uh, because I really like this natural texture. I know the answer to this, but maybe you could explain to people how you can tell a bison hide from other hides. Mostly experience. You know, I've been, like I said, I've been sorting leather for a long time. The grain character is completely different. The actual shape is also different. And the bison has kind of like a hump, you know, that you can see. And if you turn the leather around to look at it, the flesh side, like it looks different there too. Some of my favorite bison stuff is the shrunken bison shoulders that uh, people have done in the past. Let's, uh, let's move on to some more stuff. I wanted to start small items to large items today. And we're gonna start with this guy. Do you, I don't know if you've seen this before, but do you recognize what leather this is? That's the Diptide Amaretto. It's awesome. Yeah, and this is the reverse side of that Diptide Amaretto, which is a really vibrant orange shade. There's another uh, Diptide Amaretto piece coming up soon, but Matt made this one with a really awesome waxed edge that he sealed off very nicely. Hopefully it's uh, showing up properly on here. It's just really nicely sealed off. He used a special wax that he actually put some dye into. But let's move on to some watch bands too. Again, we're going small to large. These are the, the next smallest things. Lupe made three incredible watch bands and they're all psychedelic shells. And you'll notice these do not have the hardware on them yet. We're letting you pick whatever hardware color you'd like. So if you'd like the black hardware or the silver, we can put either of those on here. I'm gonna throw a curveball at you because I don't think the color name exists. We're just calling these psychedelic. Mm -hmm. But what is this one? I've named it, but what does this one look like to you? Hey, look, it looks like color eight. I'm calling it color four, because it's got color four on the well, back. Well, now that too. I see the other side, yeah. <laughs> They're not intending to make a specific color out of these, but I had to differentiate the different psychedelic colors yeah. here. But how do you know that the inside piece here is also psychedelic? It probably, it probably the isn't. the inside piece is not. This is, is lined with a piece of color number four shell on the, uh, the part that's going to touch your wrist. Yeah. This is color four shell on the inside with this psychedelic color for on the outside, which is kind of reddish with some tan shades in there. This one was one of my favorites. It's a little bit more subtle than some of the other psychedelic stuff. I was calling it psychedelic teal, but it's not, it's, you know, we're making stuff up here. There's no real color name for this. Mm -hmm. And then the back is lined with the same exact leather. This is actually a two layer strap, psychedelic teal. And then we got the teal stitching on both pieces here. And the last one, is a I'm calling this red and green psychedelic because <laughs> again like i don't know how to name that but this one is incredible looking yeah really really good pattern on this and then lupe made a nice choice with this sort of neon green yeah which, I, didn't, I didn't even know we had those colors and threads yeah we picked up some some fun private stock thread ideas uh i don't know if we've used all of them yet but uh lupe wanted it for projects like this all right i'm i'm going to show you this one this is another curveball. A lot of the stuff in here is stuff that we've never done. Can you tell what this is? I didn't know what it was until somebody told me what they called it. Well, that's it the Diptide Amaretto um, there. And this. the orange piece is the Diptide Amaretto. Yeah. This looks like whiskey Diptide yeah. or bourbon Diptide. Good job. Yeah, yeah. The darker, more brown pieces are the reverse side of Diptide whiskey shell. And then the middle piece is Diptide Amaretto and the reverse side of that as well. And the same thing on the back, mm -hmm. we've made it a symmetrical Frank the Enforcer here. And then I don't know if it's gonna translate on the video here, but it's got this like reddish, almost like reddish golden color underneath. That's pretty, pretty different. It's not like any other shell color that I've seen. You might be able to see a little bit better on the back here. All right, moving on to the next Frank the Enforcer. I'll let you describe this one too. Well, kind of the same as the uh, Fat Herbie there, cut out of the same shells probably, or not probably for sure. But that is a Frank the Enforcer all reverse with the now famous Dexter splatter on there. Is this famous already? Yeah. All right. It's, it's only been a month. It's famous <laughs> now. All right. Next up is a wallet style that we don't offer as a standard item on our website right now. But let, I'll let you guess the color of this one. Dip dyed amaretto. Yeah. And this is a great showcase of that dip dyed because you can see both sides. So the shell side here, a little bit more shiny, obviously because it's the shell side and they're intending to finish for that side. And then the reverse side, because it was dip dyed, this is much more vibrant of an orange shade than we normally see on the reverse sides of the shell. And it's got a more dramatic color shift to it than the standard Amaretto. It's darker almost on the table color and like almost more vibrant underneath. Okay, I'm gonna need your help with this one. I think I know what this is. Uh, tumbled black? I think it's tumbled black, but 
but it's not um it's an, almost not developing the same sort of pattern that i s tend to see on a lot of the tumble shells it's a little bit more flat well you don't always get that pattern it's kind of unpredictable um when the pattern is there we try to cut cut it in to showcase it, but it doesn't always come out with the pattern. But it still does have that, we talked about last time, a little bit more velvety, like opened up feeling that you kind of get with any leather when you tumble it. Uh, but the shell is much more fine in that look. The other interesting thing about the tumbled black is it kind of looks green. It kind of, if you can envision what the reverse black shell cordovan looks like, it's, it's like the essence of that green shade uh, coming out from underneath this tumbled black. I almost picked that one as my favorite because I am a big fan of that model. That is a Capone Color 8 Reverse, again, the Dexter edition. I think we have a couple of these and they're all kind of similar, but they're all unique. Um, so the drip marks might be a little bit different if you pick up one of these, but they're all going to give you that same ink stamp. It looks like you were able to cut uh, three with an ink stamp. And then we get the sort of drippy Dexter style on all three of them. All right, I got another Capone here. This is two of two Capones that are in this week's batch. This one is really great because it shows off the raw shell cordovan. And we have two different colors of raw shell on this guy. So we've got raw denim on top of raw natural shell cordovan. And for me, the raw shells are the best leather to have for patina development because there's so much room to go in particular on the raw natural because it starts off such a light color you can really see the change happen but you also get to see the luster development happen because it starts off you can kind of see it starts off a little bit more like a matte finish a little bit more dull and then as it's worn in it just gets more and more bright and shiny psychedelic shell on the outside and on the inside you have a couple of pockets that are also psychedelic shell and in the back here, you have black shell. And this psychedelic, I don't know, we kind of get a range of colors in the psychedelic. This one's a little bit more red and green. That's really cool. The psychedelic, in my mind, is this layered color effect that you don't see most of the time. And it has these sort of like pooled off, like circular looks sometimes. But yeah, I also love this idea of color combinations on the interiors of Johnny the Foxes. Instead of just picking one leather for all these different card slots, I've been digging the experimentation the team's been doing with trying out different colors on the bottom, different cards on the, or different colors on the top, or even alternating the colors between each of the card slots. All right, here's one of your favorites. Raw purple, uh, raw violet. Mm -hmm. Giant the Fox. And the black horse hide on the inside. So here's a comparison with the raw violet on the left and the violet on my right. And the interesting thing here, at least for me, is when you start to polish the leather in, it, like I was saying earlier, it kind of darkens up. Yeah, it changes the color darker. quite a bit. I, I kind of like mm -hmm. this like pale paleness of the raw violet. And it's very vibrant in color at certain angles. One more Johnny the Fox to look at, and this one is a total curveball. Do you know what this is? Have you seen this? Mm-hmm. That is a black chrome Excel work shoe butt that we call, we call it at the tannery. I've been calling it chrome X shell. Chrome X shell. So, <laughs> so this is uh, this is actually on horse butt leather, as opposed to steer, which most of the chrome Excel is made on. So the difference would be like w when I say horse butt, I don't mean just like the the shells. Yeah. It's like where the actual butt of the horse starts, there's a strip that is above the shells. So all of this right here was made from actually horse butt leather. So for the first um, month or so, it stand exactly like the shell cordovan. But after that, it follows the processes of Chrome XL. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's basically uh, stuffed and retanned and finished like Chrome XL. So it's kind of like if they had a baby. It's significantly more dense and more firm than the regular Chrome XL. Well, like it's because it's out of the horse, it's out of the horse leather. So the shell is actually still in there. It's not cordovan, but it is like the shell and the strip. The concept behind this was to create a very durable work shoe back in the forties, I believe. In the forties? Yeah, forties. Hmm. Because a lot of this, a lot of this um, leather ended up, uh, I think, used in World War II mm -hmm. for the boots. So, 
What's interesting here too, is we've used that same horse hide on the inside. So it's almost like you're using every part of the, the front. Yeah, yeah, you're using the fronts here and the butts here on the back. But you're right, this is very, like if the zombie apocalypse started today, I'd want something made out of this. Are right, we getting another dip dyed amaretto shell to show you? This one is really, really neat. It's almost like there's a little bit of extra character on this one. I'm not sure why that is. It could be because it's dip dyed. I, I gave away the inside. <laughs> but <laughs> do you see what I'm talking about here? There's like highs and lows in color. It's like a little bit Yeah, model. I picked up a little bit of color somewhere. And then on the inside here, this is another really thoughtful combination with that dip dyed amaretto on the outside. Of course, the reverse side of the dip dyed is much more vibrant and orange, like you see in the center here. And then the person who's, I'm not sure who made this, it might've been Danae, picked reverse amaretto for the lower card slots and then Western amaretto for the ones on top. And this is a great way to see the color difference between the dip dyed amaretto and the Western amaretto. I came to work one day and this leather was just, there was a roll of it just sitting there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you snuck it in the shop. I did. So that's actually, that's a new development at the tannery. Like I don't think anybody's really seen this or I think you've shown it before, but this is something that we're working on to create um, different colors and but this is really new development. Um, and we're calling that Pearl. And I think we originally were calling it Deville, but we just recently changed the name. What's the name now? You're gonna get, get you're gonna get a kick out of is this. Is it uh, Cor Cordova? Crypt, no, it's Crypto with a K. I don't like it. I'm gonna yeah. stay with Deville. <laughs> Why did you not like Deville? Too uh, satanic? No, because we have a we have a Deville there, so it's not exactly that. So we just came up with oh, a I different see. name. Well, so what is this leather like? I, I mean, I'll tell you my first impressions, really sort of waxy feel. Um, and I, even before that, it's so hard to get a gray leather mm -hmm. that it's amazing for me to see anything gray come out of Horween. And this is a really, really nice like dove gray or something. Yeah, so the wax kind of makes it look gray. I mean, before the wax, it looks like really, really almost white. Mm. But once you apply the waxes on there, that's what kind of gives it a little bit of a darker color. It looks more of like a, plating it. like a like a polished grain a little bit with um, a little bit of a waxy breakup, a little bit of a waxy feel. Is it kind of like the Nantucket? Yeah. Okay. It kind of is, yeah. And same same thing on the inside here. Uh, again, like I can't, maybe you can explain this, but I can't tell people uh, how difficult it is in my experience to make a gray leather uh, without making it look like paint. Like you can make it gray, but it's not going to look like leather. You can make gray leathers, but Actually, I believe that's the hardest color to actually see too. Mm. Like some people see it as like a blue. The one more Bugs Miranda look at. And again, this is that new violet shade that's different than the ultraviolet. It's definitely more purple where the ultraviolet has a little bit more like reddish magenta to it. When you see this violet in person, especially at certain angles, it's a really vivid purple shade that's absolutely beautiful. And I mentioned the ultraviolet and magenta. That's what we have on the inside left here. So it's a good way to compare and contrast these colors. So we've got magenta shell cordovan on top of ultraviolet shell underneath. It's it's roughly half the darkness as the ultraviolet, the magenta is. And then the right we have reverse ultraviolet. And this gives you a sense of the dyes that they use to achieve these colors. The reverse size of the shell here has this like sort of pink magenta purpley shade, but the violet shell on the outside is totally different. Yeah. The violet is totally different, but on the inside here, it's the same concept as the uh, color four and color two or the color four and the color eight. All right, we're stepping up in size here, Dan, and we're gonna move on to uh, some Tony the Ants. But this one here is a little bit different because this is the tall Tony the Ant where we have the bill slot on the outside that extends all the way at the top. There's no thumb notch, like on the uh, the standard Tony the Ant here has a thumb notch in the back. This one goes all the way to the top and that was to cover up all non-US dollar currency that's a little bit taller, like yens and some euros are a little taller and would stick out that thumb notch. It's a little different than even the red and green stuff from earlier. It's gonna be really difficult for us to sort of color classify everything on the psychedelics, I'm starting to realize. And then when I was talking to Skip, he wants to do like a bunch of different colors on top of each other like this. So <laughs> I think I see three colors here. It's like there's a light tan crust color underneath everything. And then they, it's like they had a green above some of it. 
and then like red over some more. And that is hand stitched as well. Yeah, so Amir made this one with a, uh, a wine stitch, uh, wine color thread. This is what we normally use on like a color aid shell. Tell me about this guy. I think this was uh, something you sort of had a hand in developing. Well, this is the, the violet inverted shell. We talked about it, uh, I believe the first week. So this right here is the shell side. So yeah. it was basically run inverted to have all the die splatter on the shell side. Yeah, it's hard to explain, <laughs> right? Because they finish this upside down, right? So they right. normally on the shell quarter of inside, I mean, until probably this, they've always run it with the brushes and stains touching the shell. This time they flipped the shell, shell side down and you finished it intentionally on the reverse side. So if you look inside of the pocket here, the back side of this bill slot here is just a, the straight up violet color and the excess dye that sort of rolled off the finishing machine uh, ended up on the shell side here. It's, it's confusing because every, every bit of terminology is you, backwards. Yeah, you kind of would think that that's a reverse shell that you're looking at there, but you actually have to feel this one and really have it in your hand to tell the difference. Same thing on the inside. So the inverted violet shell left and right. And mm -hmm. those are incredible random patterns here. And this is not something that you guys control the look of. It's kind of yeah. like a finishing leather as a Jackson Pollock painting or something, yeah. I bet. But you can see in the center here, this is a perfect example of what we were talking about. This is the reverse side of the shell here that's normally left untouched. But you can see how they finished for this side intentionally to give those drip marks on the backside here. All right, this is another one that's confusing because um, it's it's like the psychedelic, but we were calling this the Rorschach. Uh, are you familiar <laughs> with the Rorschach test? Yeah, I mean, I've never done one, but I, I know what it is. What do you see? <laughs> what do you see in here, Dan? Uh, I kind of see like a like a one of those satellite looks of the Earth. Oh, okay. Oh, I see the ocean here and this is land. I can see, like this is almost like a yeah, New like, Zealand or something. Yeah, this looks like <laughs> Australia right here. Okay, uh, but on the inside, I think this is kind of just as interesting as this uh, Rorschach on the outside. Same, yeah. same look on the inside here, but you've got whiskey shell to sort of play off those lighter tones underneath that dark, I don't know, like dark, dark brown color. After today, I can say that I've done a Rorschach test. All right, we're on to our second largest wallet of the day. What do you got here, Dan? Well, that is the Fat Herbie Marbled Color 8 on the outside, and it has a print on there that we're kind of debating right now what it was. It's like a box and board. We're going with the small box board for now. It's really cool. Till further confirmation. Yeah, you don't really see the marbled uh, textures very often, so that's what's unique about this one. Is this the Dexter style or is this just a really intense reverse color rate on the inside? I think that's a really intense reverse color rate. Here's one that is totally mind blowing to me. I don't think I've ever seen this before. You've probably seen it a couple times, but what is this? That is a uh, dip dyed color eight on the outside, natural. This is the raw shell natural. On the inside. It's raw natural. Yeah. And then a huge whole reading stamp, like perfectly cut into the center. And then this is what I really like. I think the dip dyed color eight is just like a really nice, it's almost like a maroon color. Mm -hmm. That's very, very cool. And we've got two more fat Herbies before we get to our biggest piece here. We're just talking about this leather too. Is it, this is, it's kind of like the Essex and Dublin family of leather, but it's polished down and with a waxy feel on the surface. And this is, I believe called the Nantucket leather, the black stuff here. Yep, and on the inside there you have uh, Pearl Crypto or DeVille, whatever you crypto prefer to call with it. A K? <laughs> crypto with K. Okay, let's go with Crypto. So this is Pearl Crypto hidden card slots with some black Nantucket on top. And then we have one more Fat Herbie that kind of reminds me of your favorite from the day, but I like this one even more personally. But we've got your favorite Dexter shell, Dexter Color 8 shell on the outside here with that incredible die mark. And that's one of the more intense patterns that I've seen on this. And the inside here, this is what I like. Well, it is reverse dip dyed. It's awesome, it, yeah. but it's like glazed. So I think this is reverse dip dyed that's just been hand glazed. And it's, it kind of reminds me of the whole it almost strips, looks, Yeah, right? it almost looks like, like regular shell. It's uh, 
really shiny and smooth. So the dip dyed is really neat uh, on the reverse side also, but we hand glazed the left side here. I want to show you that because everything about this hand glazing, I like. I like that it's got a little bit more life to it. It's almost like a wet look. And the final wallet of the day, we're talking about big contexts of leather. This is as big as it gets for us on the Shell Cordovan. And this is our long wallet. What, you, what color is this, Dan? Color eight. And this is the classic Shell Cordovan color. I think it's a classic for a reason. It's really versatile, especially in footwear. It's this like dark brown burgundy shade that seems to go really well with everything. And we've noticed that same thing here. Like on this wallet, uh, it's almost like that same sort of color eight vibe goes really well with a tan mm -hmm. on the inside and outside. It's the same thing with footwear, kind of goes well with just about everything you wear. You can wear it with black, you can wear it with brown, it goes all over the place. This is where it, it's over the top. So Lupe in the shop made this one. Is this your favorite texture that Horween puts on leather? Yeah, I mean, I really, I'm really into the reptile family. So that is the lizard, but I also like the croc and gator prints. That's really interesting here to see layers of textures put on top of each other. And again, this is the lizard texture. And you can see some of the scale patterns are a little bit more coarse on certain parts of that texture. And sometimes it's a little bit more fine. And what's really thoughtful about what Lupe did here was Lupe went from fine to coarse. This is a really great way to end week three. And everybody that's out there that's been supporting us, I can't believe how quickly week two went. I think most of the stuff was gone in about 10 minutes. I know that can wow. kind of be frustrating, but you know, these are one of a kind things. It's a little, I can get that it's a little bit frustrating if somebody wanted this one long wallet that we have and somebody else picked it up for them. We can kind of make similar things. You're never going to get it's the not going to be the exact one. one, but we can we can make another. Yeah, especially in the Dexter stuff, like the Marvel stuff, you can't really do a, a similar. You can get kind of close, but if it bottom line, the point is, is if you really want the ten year stamp, we're only going to be offering this stamp in July. After this month, it's going away forever. I think I'm going to frame it and uh, put it on the wall here, the actual tool. <laughs> so, but anybody that wants to do it during this month, we'll let you have the uh, collector's edition X stamp on any of these makeups. We can sort of reproduce it for you. It's still gonna take us you know, four to six weeks to have to something deliver it. to reproduce, yeah. But we just really appreciate you guys. Uh, and I can't wait to show you what's coming up next week. I've got a whole <laughs> bin of stuff, including some uh, things that I've never seen before. Uh, thanks again for hanging out. To, and I forgot to we mention- We forgot the beer. We forgot the beer. Should we do it next week? Yes. All right, we'll do it next week.